Hello, I'm Stonewall Sharpson. I'm going to show you how to make some black powder cartridges. These are paper cartridges that are pretty, uh, that were standard issue for a very long time up until the end of the Civil War when they came out with brass cartridges that we know today, basically. I'm going to show you how to make two types of these paper cartridges. I'm going to show you how to make a standard reenactor's uh, blank cartridge. And I'm going to show you how to make one of the cartridges for the brown bess that we're hopefully going to be uh, making some shooting videos for you later this afternoon or tomorrow. So, to do this, you need newsprint. It's a great paper for making cartridges out of. It's very close to what they originally used, and it's very uh, easy to tear. It's easy on your teeth. Whereas, say, if you were to use printer paper, printer paper is more expensive, I'm pretty sure, than newsprint, and it's a lot harder to tear with your teeth, especially if you make thick cartridges like I tend to. Uh, I've been told newsprint does like dry out and get uh, very brittle if exposed to sunlight, but if it's sitting in your cartridge box, who cares, right? So um, that's not a problem. Of course, it's, be it's a little less resistant to water, but hopefully your cartridge box is not getting wet anyways on the inside. So, And then uh, you need a pair of scissors, you need some twine, if that's how you're going to do it. I'll talk about that in a minute. You need a ruler. To shape your cartridges, you need some sort of stencil or design. You gotta know what how you're making your cartridge, and a pen or pencil to write that down with. Uh, you don't have to measure your powder. I'm measuring them for the live charges for the best because that's an absolute necessity. So I've got a powder measure and um, a funnel here, and then I've got my GoX 3F black powder. I use 3F because it's you know more. Uh, more combustive power for the same price as 2F. Um, so, and then, oh, and then you need dowels to roll your cartridges with. These are the wrong size. Uh, I've got a 3 fourths of an inch, I've got a 5 eighths of an inch, and I've got a half inch. So, that's 75 caliber, 62 and a half caliber, and 50 caliber. We're going to use a 50 caliber dowel to make the reenactors blanks, and we're going to use a 75 and a 62 and a half make the live cartridges for the best. So, uh, normally I sort of got my cartridge design. These are not historically accurate cartridges. Uh, a lot of my cartridges are bastardizations between the English cartridge and the American cartridge used during the Civil War. Um, I just sort of get my general design based off this. This is the 1855 Enfield cartridge. You can find uh, diagrams of these online. And basically, uh, I've modified it a little bit. This diagram says to use for your, this is your outer envelope, the most important part. Uh, I only use the outer envelope and the powder tube. Um, and this is vaguely what I base all of my cartridges off of and um, they're mostly to scale with this outer envelope. So, we've already cut some of those up for you. For the reenactors cartridge, I'm using, um, I'm using a trapezoid that's two inches on one side, four inches on the other, and four and a half inches along the, well technically that's actually the side, but you'll see them over it. And so rolling it is pretty simple if you want to come to the book. So the way I do it is you're going to take a half inch dowel for your blank cartridges and you're going to put it along this bottom edge here and you're going to leave about an inch or so at the bottom for where you're going to crimp it to close off the bottom of the cartridge. And you're going to roll it nice and tight. And remember, these don't have to be perfect because they're going to get shot out of a gun or tossed on the ground. Anyways, that one's not particularly good. Still kind of getting the hang of this. And you roll it up like that. Hold it down by the bottom of the dowel. And then crimp this end. So that means flattening it on one side. And then closing it. And flattening it again on the other side. And sort of pack that down nicely, and you can crimp it a few more times. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to twist this a little bit, not to tear the paper mind. I'm going to twist that up. Oh, I just tore it. Whatever. Um, and uh, a lot of people will just close these with using folds and glue. I like to use string because that's how they did it back then. Again, that one's messed up, so whatever. I'll just keep going. So you're going to cut yourself piece of twine here and you're going to tie it around this bottom side, this twist 
and you're just going to put a gray knot or two to close it off. And like I said, I, use like, I usually use two of those. Since this cartridge is messed up, I'm not going to finish it because it's broken anyway. So you get the idea. But, um, well, having done that, and this cartridge is not going to stay together now, so I'll show you. So what you would normally do is you would uh, put your powder in there, and you can measure it out, or you can just pour it to about halfway is plenty. And then you're going to hold the cartridge at the top of the powder, Make sure all the powder's down there, and then you're going to crimp it again at the top here, holding it closed, and you're going to fold it in half like this again, and then you're going to fold it over your cartridge and put the tail in inside that fold there. And you've got your basic reenactor's cartridge. I've got, as you see, this one is already made, so this is one that actually worked. So. And that one's broken, but whatever. So, and then the brown vest cartridge, it's a little more complex because the problem I have is, being this is a 75 caliber dowel, and we're using 69 caliber round balls, um, obviously that's smaller than 75 caliber. So if I actually use these 75 caliber um, trapezoids, or, well, when they're rolled, they'll be 75 caliber, there'll be a lot of windage between the paper and the ball, so powder actually get in down around the bear, uh, around the bullet, um, around the ball that is. And uh, original British cartridges, I'm pretty sure, did not use these uh, powder cylinders. But because of this problem, I'm going to use powder cylinders. Which I've got some scrap paper here. I'm going to use a 62 and a half caliber dowel to make those powder cylinders. So the process is the same. Take your dowel, leave a little bit at the bottom there. Roll up the cartridge, crimp it, that one's going to use a little more space, not quite that much, but well. Fold it up, give it a nice gentle twist. Get yourself some twine. Tie it up. And one problem I find live firing these is because the uh, because the paper is 75 caliber. You should be able to slide one of these cartridges down the barrel, and theoretically you could tap load it. But because the paper is too big for it, you have to um, squish it in with your thumb, or well, you're supposed to use your pinky for something like that. And uh, you gotta ram the cartridge home, so it's hard to do. I have to do. Uh, I have to do spit tap loading. But anyway, I'm gonna make a video about that later. So here's our cartridge tube, and you're gonna drop our 69 caliber round ball down there. And now we're going to make the powder tube. So same process again. Um, you don't have to tie these up though, because that's just not necessary. And this is where we're incorporating a mini ball cartridge. This is how they did mini ball cartridges because they had to keep the powder and the mini ball separate because the mini ball was lubricated. So I'm sort of applying that technique to this cartridge. So we simply fold this up, pull the dowel back a little bit, press this fold inside the powder tube, set the powder tube on top of the ball. And that's probably going to be a little tall. Well, I'll deal with that in a minute. And then I use 90 grains of 3F as my load for the brown best. It's a very large weapon. I'm not afraid to use a charge that high because 69 caliber ball coming out of the 75 caliber bar barrel, a lot of windage there. So I don't feel like oh, that was pretty much perfect. I don't feel like um, the barrel's gonna explode on me or anything because a lot of that energy is just getting wasted going around the ball. So, and I find it takes about 10 grains of powder to salt the pan in that brown vest. But I'll show you all those in another video. So, putting my funnel in the powder tube, pouring my 85-ish grains of powder down into the powder tube, and then we'll.
we're going to close the sky off, just like I showed you on the other cartridge. The top of the powder is about here, so we're going to um, crimp it, and then we're going to, oh, this one's a little short, but whatever. Um, I fold it back over itself, and again, hopefully the tail would fit down in that slot, but it doesn't, so. Anyway, uh, I've got the other one made up here, and as you can see, it, it ripped out. So, that's the reason why that is, is because these, uh, the powder tube is not supposed to actually be in the tail. It's supposed to come up to the tail, and then just the cartridge makes up the rest of the tail, but because those powder tubes are too long, that's what I get, so. Anyway, they're usable. And uh, I'm not sure they cared so much about folding the tails in for a best cartridge anyway. And uh, so that's basically, um, those are the basics of making a Civil War era cartridge. So you can do this very easily. And uh, I'm, you know, I haven't made that many of them, so I'm a little out of practice. So I just wanted to make a basic video on how to do it for you guys that are new and getting into it. And um, thank you for watching. Hey, so on Sharps in here. Uh, I decided I've changed my mind on some of the stuff I told you about in the video just now. Uh, I'm going to edit this one to the end of that video. So, I found out uh, through sort of trial and error, these are the cartridges I'm making for the video. I a shooting video I hope to make for you guys tomorrow. And so I've got here the same cartridges I showed you earlier. But instead of tying them like I showed you, I found out that you can crimp these, and uh, they stand up pretty well to wear and tear. I think a lot of guys glue these. I might take some glue to the bottom earlier here, if you could come here and take a look at these. And come around the side of the bit. Um, so what we have here is, I'm going to show you how to crimp this in a second. So basically you just fold it a few times, and I'll probably stick some glue in there, and that'll keep them nice and shut because if you put one of these 69 caliber balls in and you bounce it around enough times they will come open so I'm probably gonna try gluing that up later also you remember me complaining about the powder tubes well because I wasn't thinking I was being lazy not thinking to make my powder tubes smaller so the powder tubes you saw me using those are made out of pieces of paper about this big so I merely just cut those in half and now I found out that this holds just about the right amount of powder. So here we are with our 62 and a half caliber dial, or a 5 eighths of an inch. And we're going to roll this powder tube like I showed you earlier. And you're going to stick your finger in up, you know, halfway to your first joint or something, get some room in there. Not much further though, because you're going to need most of this tube for that powder. And you're going to take the lip end here, you're going to fold in, take the opposite end, fold it in on top of it, and then take these two sort of corner pieces and fold those in, and then take it off the dial just a little bit, and push it in there. And because this sits on top of the ball, that's plenty to secure this powder tube. So, here's your powder tube. And so I told you guys earlier, 90 grains of 3F. For a flint lock for that 75 caliber brown bess. Just gonna measure that out real quick and show you. It's pretty close. Here's the one I just made for you guys. Put the funnel in it, put in the power. As you will see, you could come a little closer. It is just about the right size for 90 grains of powder. And this is, right, this is what the powder tube is supposed to be like. So, hopefully, uh, once I fold it, it'll stand up to being jostled around inside this 75 caliber tube. So we're going to drop that in there, nice and gently. And then we're going to fold it, just like I showed you guys earlier. So fold one half, stick your finger in the middle. Fold it back over on top of itself, flatten it out, and I kind of did that wrong, so we're going to sort of twist it around here a little bit, and put it inside that fold. And you'll notice, unlike the ones I made earlier, which are over there, um, it's actually folding this time. And as you can see, the bottom is coming undone, so it looks like I'm probably going to have to glue these after all. Um, 
But yeah, so there you go. That's the new revised version of this cartridge. And uh, if I find any more improvements to it, I'll add them on to the end of this video. So thanks for watching.